So I uh, want to set a bit of background uh, and starts with some work that NIPA have published uh, recently and I know Dan Halloran's here somewhere and is speaking about it this afternoon. But uh, the NIPA report shows um, again that there's still significant variation in the cost of hospital delivery. We've heard uh, this a number of times over the last day and a half uh, but the latest report shows that there's still significant uh, variation in costs. And whilst the National Efficient Price um, is a, an excellent guide to uh, what the benchmark price is um, uh, for, for delivery of services, it actually doesn't, I think, give a whole lot of help to um, where uh, the differentials in costs are. And I see Phil Girello, um smiling at me as I flick back to that slide. I'll just leave it up there a little bit longer uh, for, for the ACT. Um, and I guess the bottom line is here that ABF uh, produces um, masses of data, um, lots and lots of data, and if we can turn some of this data into information, it can actually help to improve uh, the efficiency of hospitals uh, by reducing variations, a so variation in care and variation in cost. Um, and so IPA's then got a very um, rich source of nat national cost and activity data that's provided by the states and territories and ultimately comes from uh, the public hospital system. So this project really is about uh, unlocking the value of that data and moving beyond just publishing a price and a set of cost weights and really allowing uh, hospital managers and clinicians to start uh, examining that data and understanding where the variance uh, is between, between hospitals. So to do this, we've been building a national benchmarking portal. Um, we've been working with the New South Wales Ministry of Health. There's lots of New South Wales people here. Uh, and we recognise that when we started this project, it really was uh, the leading uh, portal around the country, the ABM portal. And there's certainly a lot of catch up going on. There's a lot of states um, and hospitals building their own. But this one was uh, there and uh, we, were, we were pretty happy to use it. So the, the portal will allow the comparison of uh, hospital level cost and activity um, data at the level of the DRG, uh, at the level of the principal diagnosis and, and principal procedure, uh, and also at the cost bucket level. So it's going to allow people to start to really interrogate and compare their costs with any other hospital in Australia that provides data to the uh, NHCDC. Uh, we're loading in three years worth of data, so we obviously see some uh, trends as well. Um, and at the moment we're up to 12, 13, and we hope to have 13, 14 and 14, 15 data in uh, as soon as we can. And I said it's hosted by uh, the New South Wales Ministry of Health. Uh, so this is um, the first page in the portal. Uh, all, this is all streams of activity, uh, and you can see the, the display of the cost per NWOW uh, by state. Uh, and then over here on the right-hand side uh, has the actual numbers. So this aligns with what we already know, that uh, Victoria uh, and New South Wales are, are operating below the national average. I've embarrassed Phil out of the room. He's, he's going home. Whilst the ACTWA um, and NT are, are operating above the average. So that gives us across all, uh, all streams, uh, all activity streams, and then, um, if this works, uh, allows people then to drill down into um, specific streams, so into the acute stream uh, or ED, and um, uh, this actually shows the NTs uh, has the lowest cost uh, of emergency department um, NWAL uh, in, in that year. Uh, then it allows people to drill down even further. So this is into the top um, uh, top 10 DRGs. Um, this is uh, the national uh, list. Um, so the top 10 by cost um, and the top 10 by average length of stay. And you can see uh, allows you to compare uh, your selection with the national averages. So on these slides, uh, it is the national. So the average is the, um, is the same as the selection but will allow people to get down to um, uh, quite a low level, down to LHN and then down to uh, hospital level and compare, um, uh, compare the performance against, um, against the national averages. 
And then possibly, I think the most useful uh, is the, the tab called uh, clinical variation. Uh, so again, we've done this at the national level. We've chosen two DRGs, um, uh, F62A and F62B, so heart failure and shock, uh, and compares both the uh, average cost uh, per episode and the average length of stay and, and the size of the um, uh, ball as well. Um, and then you can see down here then, down to the bucket level, uh, where the differences in costs are. So straight away, you can see that the cost of nursing uh, in Victoria is significantly different uh, to the rest of the country, as is the cost of medical. So this really will allow people to get down um, to the, uh, the lowest level. Uh, it will also allow you to compare hospitals with hospitals. Um, so we've, we've loaded in the, uh, the national peer groups, the AIHW peer groups, uh, but it will allow you to pick um, for example, if you're a clinician at the Royal Melbourne, uh, who I was speaking to before, who wants to compare their trauma service with like trauma services around the country, you'll be able to pick uh, exactly which hospital you want to compare with. Uh, and then uh, this quick report um, even allows you to go even further with a whole lot more variables that you're able to choose. So you can see straight away, we're gonna have a very simple, uh, easy to drive tool uh, that people will be able to interrogate and, and really start to explore uh, what the differences in costs are um, at both, you know, at the DRG, but across all classes, I should hasten to add, not just DRGs, uh, but also at the, at the um, diagnosis um, and, um, and procedure level, uh, across peer groups, uh, across regions, um, and, and really, uh, really drive... Um, some good analysis uh, of differences in cost. So in terms of getting access, uh, the access will be granted by jurisdictions. So this will be controlled by jurisdictions. So um, in their role as system manager, they'll determine who uh, can and can't have uh, access. Um, the good news is we're using a Commonwealth product called Vanguard, which um, means there's no uh, separate usernames and passwords. It'll just work on your um, health IT uh, login, so states can maintain responsibility for password policy and all that kind of stuff if it doesn't need to get involved in that. Um, and essentially what happens is the, the state um, department in all states except Victoria, I should add, um, uh, will give users access uh, through the Active Directory system. Uh, this then uh, authenticates through Vanguard in Canberra uh, on the cloud and that then gives you direct access to the, um, to the portal. So essentially for users, if you've been granted permission by your state department, you hit the link, it will log you straight in automatically. So there's no, no messing around with passwords and um, uh, usernames, which uh, from our side is um, a pretty neat thing. Um, so we're working with the states now to, to get them all signed up uh, to the Vanguard service, which is, is extremely simple. Um, in the case of Victoria, we'll need to sign up each health service one by one, and we're working with the department on how that might happen. Um, so we expect to launch it in the next few weeks. Uh, I'm taking some ideas from Frank about how we might do that. Uh, if Claudia, if he's finished with Claudia Schiffer, we might see if she can come and help us. Um, we had really hoped to do the launch, uh, a, a really, uh, you know, a hard launch today, but. Uh, like all good IT projects, um, we've gone slightly uh, over, over schedule. Not over budget, though, so I think that's not too bad. So we will launch that through our website and through our um, stakeholder emails and probably through the delegate list here just to let you know when it's launched. Um, and then we will also tell you who the contact people are in your state um, about how you go about organising access to the portal. Uh, and there'll be stuff on our website around how to use the portal and um, troubleshooting and all those sorts of things as well. Um, and, uh, and then I guess in terms of what's next, um, so we think there's a great opportunity here to, to put in the uh, safety and quality measures. So as the hospital acquired list, uh, complication list is finalised uh, over the next uh, couple of months, uh, our intention is to go back and uh, apply those um, uh, those complications to the existing admitted data um, and put that into the portal so people can start benchmarking uh, what their performance is compared to the national averages but also uh, against their peers. There's certainly an opportunity for us to put some information around uh, readmissions. Um, 
And then I think there's a, a, a longer term opportunity to really start to use the, uh, the underlying data, the input data to the classifications uh, to really drive some clinical benchmarking. So what is the variation in FIM scores across the country or HONOS scores uh, in mental health? Uh, and as we get that data coming in, we'll be able to build more and more capability into this product. Um, so that brings me to an end. Thank you.